In this video, I'll be introducing vectors and scalars and explaining how to calculate the resultant of a vector. So the main difference between a vector and a scalar is that a vector has magnitude and direction, whereas a scalar has only magnitude, that is only size. So some examples of vectors would include force, acceleration, velocity, and displacement, while scalars include speed, distance and energy. Here is an example of two vectors at 90 degrees to each other. This could be a boat that is trying to travel across a river at 5 metres per second, and as it does so, is experiencing a current down the river of 7 metres per second. We need to find the resultant velocity. So remember, vectors have magnitude and direction, so we must find both in order to describe this velocity. Firstly, we need to construct a vector triangle. Now, the golden rule of vector triangles is that we must draw one vector at a time, starting each one at the end of the previous one. So we can choose to start with whichever vector we want. Let's start with the 5 meters per second vector, and let's draw that one over here. Now, we need to draw the next vector, starting it at the end of the previous one. So we end up forming a vector triangle like this. This is very important. The arrows must chain up like this so that they are continuously going along. Now, what you'll note here is that it doesn't look very much like a triangle. The reason here is that the shape doesn't close up. This means that the, sh that the system is not in equilibrium. If we had a closed triangle by chaining together all of our vectors, it would mean that it was in equilibrium. There were no resultant forces. We can see here we must have a resultant force. So let's draw that resultant force in. And that needs to be drawn from the start of the first vector all the way along to the end of the final vector. To find the magnitude of this vector, we must use the Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared for a right angle triangle. And this most certainly is a right angle triangle. So this side we can call a. This side is B, and the hypotenuse is what we're trying to find out here, is C. So this follows that 5 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared. So our resultant vector here, C, equals the square root of 5 squared plus 7 squared which equals 8.60 meters per second. So that is the magnitude of the resultant velocity. To work out the direction we need to use trigonometry to calculate the angle from the horizontal. We know the adjacent, we know the opposite. We also know the hypotenuse because we've just calculated it, but it's not good practice to use something that you've calculated uh, unless uh, you have to. Uh, in this question, we've been given the adjacent and the, and the opposite, so we need to use tan. So we know that, let's call this angle theta. So we know that tan theta equals opposite, that is 7 divided by adjacent 5 and that will give us an angle equal to 54.5 degrees. 